I've been really allergic to poison ivy ever since I was little. One time I even had, I almost had my immune system shut down from it. So I've had a bit of a vendetta against it. And over the past decade, I've kind of become an expert at killing it. And I've tested many things. Weed killer, it just kind of kills everything. What you want to do is you want to kill the poison ivy and let everything overshadow it. And so you need to get in and just kind of just clip the poison ivy. Don't clip anything else around it because otherwise you just end up with a dead spot, which is perfect for poison ivy just to come back in the spotlight. So that's either a shovel, which does not have a very long like reach, or what I got this year, which is a two foot, or a two meter or a six foot pruner, which has done the job amazingly because I can just reach in and snip the poison ivy. And that way I don't have to get, actually, I don't have to cross the line and stand where poison ivy is. And that's the big factor because I haven't gotten poison ivy, uh, well, I got, I got poison ivy because I walked through the woods and I had one little spot on my arm. But that was, in, that was in February. I wasn't expecting poison ivy to be out. But other than that, I haven't gotten any poison ivy from my war on poison ivy this year, eastern poison ivy to be, to be precise. Even though I've cut in the past month or so about 500 poison ivy plants, most likely some, they're mostly all one giant plant because my neighbor's yard seems to be a poison ivy forest. But I'm making a lot of progress and I would like to share my method with you. So, I got this off of, I believe, Amazon. It's a nice little pruner. Mm, bug. This one is, uh, I don't remember which one it actually is. Mesoga, Masoga. Something like that, but these seem to be a really, a really amazing tool for this. So first, we have a, a container of water. So when I first come back, I can wash my hands off to make sure I don't have any rusheol on my hands. So when I pick up the garden hose, I don't have any rusheol on the garden hose handle. And then I can start cleaning the rest of like my boots and everything. And so I have a garden hose and a washcloth, and that is it for what you need for cleaning off with a, after doing a poison ivy. Now, one thing I've actually used quite a bit is just smothering. If you don't mind killing everything around it, I had one little plant come up right here. And as you can see, that plant is wilting. I discovered it right whenever I was leaving. Me and my dad were going to get, to get breakfast. And so I didn't feel like having to get all this stuff out and clip it because, well, if I'm going to clip any poison ivy, I'm going to make sure that I decontaminate afterwards. But... See, I'm, I'm just considering this thing always contaminated. And I added this sticker to it so that whenever I place my other hand there, I know for a fact that I will never put my hand past there and I will never let poison ivy get over this side. So this is the marker of like that side's poison ivy and this side's not poison ivy. And so that helps a lot. The prowl also lends to why I don't have any poison ivy infection or... Um, reactions after all of this. Now there's a little bit of poison ivy I wish to deal with up here. Again, when I was walking over here, there's a little plant growing here that I smothered, but as you can see here, there's some poison ivy growing there, which this is the poison ivy right here. This little three-leaf plant, eastern poison ivy. Like that. And so I just keep clipping it. And that, this is a new plant. It just came out a little, uh, like three months ago. And it was quite large, but I keep clipping it back. And I'm slowly working down the roots to where now the roots are really, really desperate to make more sprouts. And they're running out of... Uh, nutrients. Now there's some ones back here that I'm, I've, I've been working on, most likely one large one, on my neighbor's property, that it seemed to be a much bigger problem than I expected. So I girdled the vines on the tree. I didn't actually hurt the tree at all, although the tree is pretty damaged, but I cut all the vines around this tree and 
now that the vines have died down, you can see that this one poison ivy plant is absolutely terrible. It is way too big. I didn't even see it. It must be growing through the middle of the tree. But then we have all this other poison ivy growing up. Right there. And right there. So, I'm going to try to be as far away as I can. I do not want this stuff falling on me and, or on the camera because I have to disinfect the camera now. Normally I do this one, uh, two handed, but I've gotten good at this to where I can do it one handed for now. All right. Poison ivy, make a video about it if that's okay. There's poison ivy there? Oh, a lot of it. I've been killing it. That. Yeah. So this, this this stuff with the big leaves, I've been working on that. There's a lot in the whole area. Hopefully, I'll get it done by the end of the year. But it's got such a big root system that it keeps growing up. Uh, that's been getting high too, all over the fucking place. Yeah. That's, that's one of the reasons why I started doing it. See, this is poison ivy right there. Has I this? I had like that red. Yeah. It. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. It's really tricky. And uh, yeah, I would have never known. So what I did was I girdled the tree. Well, I didn't girdle the tree, but I, I killed all the vines in a row so it's easier to see them. And all of a sudden it's like, oh my god, there's, it's everywhere. I think the vine's actually growing through the middle of the tree. So I'll just kind of keep going yes. at it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, because it looks like it's going all the way up it. Yeah. Although, yeah. I think I'll just keep trimming it, though. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm just like... Yep. It. Well, we got some going back up here. See, I cut all this, but it's it's coming back. Oh, this is a lot. Bob will probably have to go mow over a lot of this because it's sprouting up in the mode section now, but I'll try to get the big stuff. My main goal is just to get rid of the big things. And that way it doesn't have any seeds. Because the problem is I have a lot of birds in my yard. They really like living around the, the workshop and they eat the berries and they poop them out. And that's how the poison ivy gets into my yard. So if I just start with cleaning up Bob's yard, and uh, cleaning up my other neighbor's forest. Well, it should go a long way. Now, thankfully, I have disrupted all these so much. This was, this was like a sea of poison ivy berries here. And, uh... Oh, that's also another thing. This has a little hook on the back of it, so I can drag stuff, which is actually kind of nice. But, um... There's too much stuff to really go through right now. But whenever the poison ivy decides to invest more energy into a uh, piece that has like a to grow ba uh, berries on I will stop I'll put a stop for that because at the very least want to stop the, uh, the grow or the, the spread of these plants I'm being very mindful I'm keeping track of everywhere that the this has touched me and uh, this piece accidentally touched like right here on my arm, so I'm going to make sure that I don't touch that to anything. You know, you want to be very secure about this. Now one nice thing is, there's actually some neat plants here once you once you get the poison ivy away, because before, this all of this was up to here, with poison ivy, and now it's kind of cut down, and the other plants are kind of taking over. There's another reason why you don't want to use a bunch of weed killer, because it would kill all like this, uh, well, I don't actually know what it is, but it's like Japanese honeysuckle. It's little vines that grow across the ground. It makes a nice little blanket of, oh, little fucker. 
this little blanket of ivy that helps smother any poison ivy that can grow. Oh, and uh, don't be confused by this. This is actually a tree. It's a type of tree. They're kind of longer and more spindly um, leaves. I can't recall if it's a sycamore or sassafras. There's something over there. Because I know I have one that keeps laying those little sprouts and I keep thinking it's poison ivy, but it's like, no, no, it's not poison ivy. It's, it's actually something else. We have a little bit over here. See, it's so much nicer than just putting chemicals in the ground. I turned the frickin' frogs gay. <laughs> well, this is getting real cut down. So what's nice is now that I spent, because I spent an entire day going like, well, four hours. And I know, I was really pushing it. I'm surprised I didn't get any any uh, reaction from it. But I spent four hours just going around like this, cutting down really, really big plants. And the next day I spent another four hours. And eventually, well, I know I might not be focusing on my camera very well. It's not a poison ivy plant, but it's just in the way. That is a poison ivy plant. Right there. If I had both hands, I would just do this all, but... See, that's the thing. I don't want to make a huge thing of this. I just want to come through and I want to be that little, that force that's just like, for some reason, the plant doesn't know why, but just like 30% of all the leaves just fail for some reason. You just can't make it eventually. I don't need to go overkill and cut everything as soon as it pops up. I just need to keep taking from, some from it and it'll it'll get the message and it'll finally die. See, these are all coming from stumps of vines. And so it's actually easier to take off a bunch of them. I don't know if we have much of a problem up there. Now, this is a cottonwood tree. This is what I make mallets out of. So if that ever has an issue, I might see about making mallets out of it. There's a lot here on the sidewalk. Yeah, this must have been a larger vine here that's growing up. Because I cut this away and it's all little ones now. What? Oh well. Let's seek out the larger ones. So now that I've done Bob's property, um, there's not too much over there. Take one little walk around. Uh, it's not too much in there, thankfully. But I know it's growing there. So now, whenever you cut a big vine, be prepared for the poison ivy to try to sprout everywhere and make sure you keep mowing it down because it's going to, you're basically cutting off the head and the roots are going to try to uh, build up, I'm trying to build a new head. That is the thorn, I believe. So I just try to keep killing those. And over here is a big vine that's under the ground. A root network, I guess you could call it. It's gone back down to small ones. I've only given it maybe four days to grow up again. It's, it's really trying to make an effort to grow back up. It's really in shock, no doubt. Nothing too big there, so I'm not gonna walk past there because there's poison ivy there, or at least I'm not sure of where the poison ivy is. But the idea is, if I can just cut like six feet in, two meters in, I can get quite a bit done. All right, let's go back to the tree garden area, the forest garden that I'm making. Uh-huh. 
these little bushes keep trying to come back. I'll have to cut those down. I had some more poison ivy growing up back here, but I've cut down all the large plants and I don't see any more, which is nice. Whoa. Slipped on a conveyor belt. You know, it's funny. Other than Bob's property, there's really not any poison ivy back here. Except for one big vine that was here for the longest time, and I cut it this last winter. And uh, it was just around that one tree over there. Now let's see if we see any poison ivy this time. I've really been cutting this stuff back a bit. Whoa, yep, I see some right there in the center. It's just, it's barely lacklusterly growing up. Cause it, it's, it's getting back to the, to the reserves of its, of its energy that it has. Oh, that was the off cutting that I cut off. Never mind. I had that issue where I, I cut off a poison ivy head and I throw it away and it lands without me knowing it that in a, an orientation where it looks like it's another plant. So I cut it again. So this needs to be cleaned up a little bit, but there's no poison ivy here. I just wanted to not mow it for a while to let some of these black walnuts grow up, and then I can pick whichever one I want to keep. Oh, that's a shame. This black walnut's dying from these darn um, tint worms. These darn tint worms. Well, they've pretty much killed that one. Oh, it's got a vine on it and everything. I doubt that one's going to survive. But there's other ones. I may have to actually start spraying for those. I've had issues of poison ivy coming up around here. Turns out there was another vine growing on the inside of that tree. You can see the remnants of the big vine on this side. There's a bigger one on the other side. But I've cut it away about five times now and it's not grown back. So every time I cut it away, it grows back slower. And then it kind of speeds up a little bit and then it's done for. So I think there's like a different levels of severity. Well, those tent worms make a right mess. <clears throat> now what's nice is I've been cleaning all this out. I've been sparing the trees because I like the shade, but I really haven't found much poison ivy at all. Even back here, there's really nothing, so it's, it's kind of amazing what a dark forest will do. That's why you want to keep the shade. I don't believe that's poison ivy. No, I don't think that is. These are too round. Ah, there was one little tiny poison ivy plant over there, but I'm not seeing it coming back up, so... Yeah, that might be it. Well, that's good. Now time to go clean off before the next big storm comes in because we only have like a half hour window between storms, which is fine. Okay, so that's contaminated and my entire right arm is contaminated, but I think I can still ex expand the tripod. Alright, so now enters the de decontamination phase. See, so even just diluting the urushiol that much helps an incredible amount. And never use hot water. It opens up your pores. And you know what? Soap isn't really that necessary as long as you get it off quickly enough. So that's pretty much clean for my hands. And I don't think I have any ratio on me, but you never know. And I don't want to find out. Notice how I sprayed the garden hose in case it touched the handle, which again, should be pretty far away from any poison ivy.
right. So that, that tool I consider always um, contaminated. And so I, I never, like, I never pick it up without washing my hands or whatever. So, because there's always going to be poison ivy at the end. Glasses. Get some junk on it. All right, so. I start off doing individual pieces and then I unite them together. So I'm starting off with just my face and my neck and my hair. Now normally I start off with my arms because my arms get itchy. But uh, in this case, my face was, itch was itchy, so I started off with that. But uh, I also start off with my, my arms. Clean again. Now is the part where I wash off my shirt. Be sure to not have any creases in your shirt because because I hold up the thing like this there is a chance that I I, I could somehow contamination onto the handle and the handle onto my hand and my hand onto here and so I pay extra t attention to this and then also because I also switch around to my left hand a lot, I also pay attention to this side here. Because I'm weird and not precisely right handed. But oh well. But yeah, I don't think there's, like, as long as you don't touch any of it, now I'm just cleaning off any possible dust. And that really just helps me sleep right, knowing that I don't have anything dirty on my clothes and uh you know there's no sense in washing your clothes if you didn't really do much with them spray off my boots now i'm going to start over face i'm going to com combine the sectors of the cleaning Neck, hair, arm. So now I'm going over the second layer of cleaning or phase of cleaning or whatever. Shirt. And hey, it worked out an odd day because you end up being wet. So it's like, that's it's fine. I gotta hurry up because it's fine. But oh well. And now I, call, I consider myself decontaminated from the top to the middle. And uh, and now lastly, the last step is to just wipe off the side and the rim of my boots because you just never know. But I, I sprayed them off good. But, oh. that's all. That poison ivy is going to be hard pressed to come back with the same energy time and time again. And uh, rain's getting bad. Now I know some of you might think that my uh, decontamination routine is a bit excessive, but there's more. When I get inside, I'm just going to get a, a nice clean washcloth and just wipe down again. Just because I, I wash my face like five times a day. It just feels nice to have a nice clean face anyway. So 
it just worked out at the end of the day. I spent a little time clipping poison ivy and I, I just kind of washed myself off and it works out really well. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and good luck getting rid of poison ivy. It needs to be eradicated. Thank you very much for watching. See ya.